Tonight's episode of Naked Zombie Radio is proudly brought to you by Zombie Steez. Geek culture, zombies, clothes and gifts for your apocalypse. Our mission is to find the best geek clothes, gifts and gears from all around the world and make it available right here in Australia. We post fast, have competitive prices, offer express posts to those last-minute gift emergencies. So give us a try at Zombie Steve's. We're hungry for your business. It is time, once again, to lock your doors, shut your windows, strap yourself into your favourite comfy chair, and tune out and tune into The Naked Zombie. G'day boys and girls and welcome to another exciting episode of what has been known as the worst radio show in the history of radio shows, The Naked Zombie. And joining me in the zombie studio tonight, the one and only, the eye candy of the show, the, the guy that makes me giggle like a schoolgirl, is Liam. G'day Liam. How are you? I'm good mate, you're looking marvellous tonight. Forgotten almost how cramped the cardboard box was. It's been a while. <laughs> I'm starting to spread out with the love. Anyway mate, we have so much happening. Look what we got. Heaps. Okay, we got. Oh God. Okay. Um, where do we start tonight? We start tonight in saying that we had an awesome time. Well, I had an awesome time on doing Geek Speak, doing the Man Cave with the boys, which was a lot of fun. If you haven't seen it, you'll find it on the website. Also, I got to do the Late Show with um, Scott Black. Had a ball doing that. Uh, kept trying to escape. <laughs> just trying to leave but look had a lot of fun and look and and they were such lovely people as well and i can't thank them enough and the other big news the news that has rocked the world the world of the zombie is we have a tv series coming out yes we do it has been brought to us that channel 31 digital wants to have to start with this is to start with 10 episodes of, ready for this, Naked, Naked Zombie, Zombie TV. TV. If you haven't seen the post on the Facebook page, you don't know what you're missing. Because basically in a nutshell, we are going to do what's um, very much like the radio show. When well, We're not going to go around with you know Ghost Hunter or anything like that. It's nothing to do with that. But we're going to be doing stuff regarding urban legends, uh, paranormal pop culture, all the really, really cool stuff. And, and people are going to write in us to tell us their stories, and we're going to have like a panel set up, and yeah, and we're going to talk about it and have fun with it, like we do on the radio show, and you know, and we've got a fantastic, we've got Russell Smith coming, he's going to direct it for us. Yep. We have a great production team lined up to help us do it. So um, I'm just amazed by the outcome of support from people who've jumped on the Facebook fan site for Naked Zombie Radio. And look, you can go across there and click that like button. Don't forget to tell your friends about it. I mean, you know, we're always, we throw more stuff up there than we do on the website because yep. it's just easier just to post my usual crap and put it up and everyone gets to have a giggle or want to throw stuff at me. Uh, but that's in. But before we go any further, guess what happened today? What happened today? We had a message on the studio phone. Someone left us a message now, it's not often we get messages, but I thought I'd just play you this message from this person that I adore and I worship the ground they walk on, um, being a bit of a you know, geek myself. And um, I'm going to play it for you now and we're going to see what response is after you hear it. You ready for this? Yeah. Here play it away. goes. Hello, you've reached the voicemail on Naked Zombie Radio. We're currently not on the studio right now, but if you leave your name and details, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Fuck it. That would be right. Every time I ring, I get a bloody answering machine. Okay, here's the deal. Fuck cards. One of my assistants told me that you lot were going to produce a TV series for the sweet love of God. Why? Why would you do this to people? It is bad enough that you still carry on like a bunch of drunk monkeys on radio and now you want to produce a TV series. I warn you now. 
if you go ahead with this, I am going to shove my foot so far up your asses that it will produce its own black hole. Hang on, there is a knock at the door. Oh yes, Brad, it is your grandma. That's right, I am going to bang her, and bang her good, and she will be all like, yeah, baby, and, ooh, your rims are so hard. How do you like them quantum equations? Hawking's out. Well, there you go. It's a bit rough. No, mate, look, if people have listened back to the early shows, like the very, very early shows when the zombie first started, me and Wadsy actually got a message from Mr Hawkins himself complaining how bad the radio show was and, and how basically he wanted to drive his um, chair off a cliff face to get away from it. Uh, so there you go. So that was from our, our good friend with Hawking saying how much he dislikes the idea of having a TV show. And... I've got nothing after that now. You've run out. I've run out of ideas. And thank you and good night. Yeah, that's <laughs> Thanks to Jonathan and Naked Zombie. Yeah, so look, uh, just put it out there, of course. Uh, a big thank you to Zombie Steve's again for um, being a sponsor of the show and actually putting up some future, some great prizes and stuff like that for people that we're going to have out there. And, you know, we've got a lot happening. You know, the, the TV show is going to be kicking off soon and uh, we're going to start uh, filming that now. It is... It is going to be actually broadcast on a television station, which is like, ooh, wow. <laughs> I mean, an, an actual TV station. An actual TV station. That exists. Us, us on TV. How freaking scary is that, man? I'm, I'm, I'm not going I'm, I'm to. Actually, to be honest with you, I was very hesitant about doing that because I've always put it out there, I dislike paranormal TV shows. But just as me in general because I'm not a huge fan. And speaking of disliking paranormal TV shows, um, my good friends of Goo, um, the Ghosts of Oz radio station, uh, next week I'll be going on their show to voice my opinion uh, as a pop culture side of that. So I'll be interviewed by them uh, coming on their show and... And I'm sure I'll manage to upset somebody. Uh, as, as you do all the time. <laughs> my, There's like, always like that my, one person out there. Oh, mate, it's, it's like that's why I wear that shirt occasionally. It says, uh, what does it say? Something about annoy people. Yeah. Or, or, <laughs> that, that one person hiding in the shadows with a battery charger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I annoy a lot of people. But anyway, so that, that's that's really good. So we're really excited about all that and doing things. And tonight we are going to... We're going to talk about different subject matters that we find absolutely fascinating. It's me and Liam tonight, and look, apologies for last week's show as well, because basically we had nothing but issues with Skype and that, and I should have known better because I did actually listen back through it, and I thought, oh, do I put it up or don't put it up? And I decided to put it up, and usually I'm very careful about doing stuff like that, and I'm sort of like, oh, I try to fix up, but, but I mean, I work to like midnight, trying to fix that and i threw it up and then it didn't sound too bad my end but when i listened back to it the next day i went oh it's hideous <laughs> that would have been the worst possible sounding interview uh radio show podcast like 45 minutes of straight white noise it was just about that and i didn't realize how bad it was until i got a few emails we're going look and, and to those who did email thank you uh, always open to some feedback and stuff like that because i don't always have time to listen back to the show because i'm always busy doing other things like we do the show late at night and time I get it up it's way past my my, my bedtime and I'm off want to do other things besides work on the computer but it's all been dealt with and sorted out now so we won't have that problem anymore so Liam what's been happening in the big bad world of what you're doing lately um lots been happening so I guess one of the first big things to Big plug for Moonlight Tours of South Brisbane Cemetery. Which Moonlight are Tours, yes. Just about to kick over for 2013. So first tour is coming up this Friday. Um, mm -hmm. Still a couple of tickets left. So I guess either yeah, jump through Haunts of Brisbane on Facebook or South Brisbane Cemetery Moonlight Tours and mm -hmm. book in if you're keen. Um, hopefully it's not going to be pouring down rain like it has been the last couple of days, but they're saying Friday is going to be fairly fine. So I've, I've willed it to wane. You've willed it to, to wane? wane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just put me in misery. Yes, so we're going to be so moonlight tours are coming up. So if you're in the Brisbane area, if you want, look, I've been to these tours, and Liam does run them. Um, absolutely brilliant. I, I learnt so much, and they do change on a regular basis. We haven't plugged our moonlight tours in a while, no, actually. So this will be the first for 2013. We finished up the last one. I think it might have been about November of last mm -hmm. year, but yeah, had. A couple of months now over Christmas, completely revamped. It's some absolutely brilliant stories that are going to get dropped this Friday. So 
And if you want to hear some freaky ass stories, seriously, you go on these moonlight tours because they're factual. They're all actual events and the people that are actually buried there. Um, and I learned so much. And, you know, I thought I had a pretty good understanding of what's around there, but I had no idea really considering what was actually there or who was there, who, which, which famous people actually buried at that cemetery. And, I mean, this is South Brisbane, which is also known as the Boggo Road Cemetery. Yep. I mean, it's not the correct name for it, but that's what it's basically been christened as uh, because a lot of the convicts... So, that, yeah, probably they're... best known for the 42 executed criminals from Boggo Road who ended up in Section 6B there. And we take that section in as well and have a bit of a chat about some of the... And what, Some of the and, people who and met their end and ended up in South Brisbane at Bogger Roads. What got me going was the one story you told us. So if you haven't, heard, if you're just new to the the, the zombie, look, uh, go back and listen to the past shows because we have some really good stories about it. There, there was that one story that really, um, really churned me stomach. And he, this guy is actually buried there. It's a guy that actually ate the cabin boy on one of the ships. He did. He actually chewed chewed down on a young fella because um, he disappeared. The cabin boy disappeared. What was that guy's name again? So his name was Moncardo. That's right, Moncardo. Remember that now? So, yeah, and the cabin boy disappeared and when they searched for him, they found pieces of him underneath the underneath Moncardo's bed, but they were the, the juiciest pieces that he'd kept for later. Yeah, well, there you go. Cannibalism on the uh, the Queen Mary, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> What's for dinner? Oh, I got a nice little Frenchman here, <laughs> lightly salted. But yeah, this is the thing. Th- these are the cool stories and events you're going to find at the South Brisbane Cemetery, and 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 the the people that actually are residents there, as the put were. Also, yep. there's a story of the the woman in black that who is. frequents that certain area because her husband passed away, and when her husband passed away, he uh, she did not stop wearing black, did she? She she was there nearly every day and yep. she mourned so, till mourned she passed away herself. Is, yeah, it's still there, so Yeah, and she's she's been rumored and has been seen um walking through the cemetery. So and I think she's been caught on photo a couple of times too, hasn't she? Yeah, so blurry figures, but um she was spotted quite clearly by a couple of people on one of the tours, so much so that the people on the tours actually thought it was a real person. Mm. And that was probably going back mid last year. Mm. A couple of people towards the back of the group saw a woman move behind the group and duck in behind the shed and they actually took off around the side of the shed chasing her. Thinking yeah, that it was a real person and got around behind the shed and there was no one there. So, I mean, this, these are the cool events that that happen at, at that doing the moonlight tours at the South Brisbane Cemetery. Look, we always advise that it, instead of going to these places on your own and stuff like that, go and, yeah, and check them out. You got to get permission first. But if you actually go with something like moonlight tours, you actually get a full history lesson. You actually get the events. Yeah, and and I just want to talk about one main subject tonight, which is suicides in cemeteries. You'd be surprised what you don't read in the newspaper. Yep. You'd be surprised what you don't hear about on TV. Because according to the, the um, statistics we've gone over, the one place more people commit suicide than anywhere else is in cemeteries. Yep. Because if you ever... Okay, let me, let me give you an example, folks. And this is a bit macabre, but you know, this is what we deal with. If you ever walk through a cemetery and you see a bit of rope or a bit of nylon cord or anything hanging from a tree, the chances are that's where someone's hung himself. And what they do is uh, the police will take down the body, but they usually leave the rope there for evidence purposes and forensic stuff. And I noticed in one cemetery there's this one bit of rope that hangs down off this one certain tree. Now, the yep. story behind that was this... It was a young lass, wasn't it, that committed suicide there because her fiancé yep. uh, was killed in an accident or killed something? Accident, yeah, killed yeah. in an accident. And and she actually hung, hung herself just over it near his grave, didn't she? Yep. You want to tell so, us a bit about that story? That's, that's cool. This, uh, Liam's got all the real creepy-ass oh, I've, stories. I've got... <laughs> when it comes to... Yeah, and, you know, it's a horrible thing, suicides, but Tawong Cemetery has... Yeah, you go back through the records um, and the number of cemetery suicides that there were at Tawong was absolutely phenomenal. Mm. Um, and there are some places there, you know, sort of through the 1920s and 1930s where it was virtually a monthly occurrence where, you know, the groundskeepers, you know, the sexton would come in and they'd have the grave diggers come in and they'd be moving through the cemetery to go and dig another grave and would stumble across another body laying on top of a grave. And that seemed to be a fairly regular occurrence, especially with um, strychnine and cyanide. 
Um, and in, the, in those days, a lot of people, you know, there was rat problems and it was quite common to get cyanide, you know, rat poison and whatnot. And, yeah, a lot of people, if they lost loved ones and decided that they couldn't go on any further, would go into the cemetery at night time and lay down on the grave of their loved one, whether it be their parents or their lover or their child. Yep. And, yeah, take the rat poison and, and pass away. And, and this is a kind of event, but this doesn't... This, and we're going to get back on that shortly, but I saw a documentary a little while ago, um, you know, Mount... Is it Mount uh, Fuji in Japan? Mount Fuji, yep, the uh, forest. The, the forest in Japan um, where... And this is this is the funny thing. Um, I saw this documentary where people would go from all around Japan, right, and and go to this Mount Fuji National Park, and they'd actually string up lines. So if they change their mind, they can get back. Because once you're in there, you're pretty much lost anyway. Yeah, it's thick as it gets. It's thick as it gets anyway. But a lot of the locals don't go there to commit suicide. It's a lot of the people from around the areas, and a lot of them are quite young people too, which is very, very sad. It's um, look, suicide's not a nice thing, and we're going to, we're not talking about suicide as an as any sort of funny. It's not. It, it's a horrible, horrible thing. I've had friends myself who have lost through suicide growing yeah. up when I was younger, but it's more to do with what people's viewpoints in that are on the subject and, and why people go to these places, especially to do this. Uh, look, we are a radio show and we deal with this sort of matter and it's not, it's, you know, usually we have fun and stuff like that. But, you know, it's I'm always fascinated in some way, like this one particular area, like in yeah, Japan. Certain, certain places, for their own reasons, seem to draw... Yeah, draw a mass people. amount of people. We're talking... Hundreds and hundreds of people a year will drive across the country. Japan's not huge, but it's still it's a fair hike to go to the, the state forests in Mount Fuji and commit suicide by hanging. And it's usually by hanging. It's yeah. no, it's not any other. You know, the, the, you don't. There's no gunshot. And they had this one gentleman who actually walked through there, and his job was basically at the end of the day to find the bodies and report them. And when they were doing the interview, they actually found one body there which was a skeletal remains of a young uh, young bloke. And, but it was all that was less, and it was just something he didn't see previously. Yep. Because it's so dense and thick, he probably walked thing. past it six or seven times. They yeah, always have sort of, it's, you know, it's like clean up the, you know, find the dead bodies day kind of thing. Yeah. Sort of, you know, once for like a couple of days, once a year, they actually have like an emu parade and go through the forest as best they can to try and recover as many mm. bodies as they can, you know, from prior suicides that year. So, I mean, this this is interesting. In fact, you know, why are people drawn to these locations? How, how, and this is what these are things that we love, like to talk about is, is this whole why. why. Why that certain area? Why will people go into a... I know because it's a cemetery and they may have loved ones and that there, but there's also been a lot of reported cases of people just going there who don't have any association. Yep with the cemetery and they'll go and commit suicide and stuff like that. So it's it's just a very to me it's quite morbid at the same time as why someone would choose that sort of location and it's not fair on the friggin poor groundskeepers well, and stuff. Yeah, the, uh, well maybe that's that's the rationale behind it that it, perhaps it's you know there's a understanding out there in the community that perhaps a grave digger would be less traumatized for coming across a dead body than... Yeah, but grave diggers or, or, or what they like to be known as, as as maintenance personnel. I mean, they don't see dead bodies anyway. So no, they're, they're so. usually in case and then in, in a, a soph- you know, uh, sophaguses or, or, or coffins or something like that. Um, and, and that's just really fascinating why those certain areas... Because I don't... My mindset is not like that. Yeah, you know, I mean, God forbid, but that's, that's the one place would be very lonely. Yeah, you know what I mean to do that or go into a forest like that and, and stuff. So interesting topics. Now, what are the sort of the other stories, mate, regarding say like Tawong Cemetery and stuff like that? Some of the cases that we've had in Brisbane here. Um, probably another good one that I can think of from Tawong um, was a chap who his wife was quite ill, um, and he attempted to sort of euthanize her you know by her choice yep. um and had tried the same thing himself but she'd passed away as a result and unfortunately he didn't um made him violently ill um 
but he actually came, you know, when they were the, sort of she passed away and he was discovered, you yeah. know, in a pretty terminal, you know, condition. But they actually managed to take him to the hospital and revive him. Um, and he ended up going before the courts and, and having charges laid. But he ended up going and laying on his wife's grave and, and committing suicide. Another chap um, who had decided to shoot himself in the bedroom and his wife came in on him and tried to tried to wrestle the gun off him and he ended up accidentally They're shooting, shooting, her. shooting yeah. her dead. Um, another, you know, another case where he, he ended up facing charges and I think he'd actually was a returned soldier and had, I mean, not that it would have been understood in those days, but, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder and what he'd seen in the war and had decided to end it. I think he had a crippled leg as well, so he wasn't, you know, in any way, shape or form able to sort of get up and have any major kind of life anymore. He couldn't really get any major employment mm-hmm. or that kind of thing. So it was you know, back in the days when men, you know, were expected to go out and do physical labour. So um, he was let off at the court pretty much on a technicality and went straight to the to the cemetery and committed suicide on his wife's grave as well. So, it's 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 interesting though. I mean, it's a, it's like it's like the mystery of why. I mean, you can understand why people would would, would do that, right? Yeah. I mean, if your if your whole world comes to an end and you can't carry on, look, I I, I don't know why people do it for 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 my because I don't understand that side of it. Um, so be it. But it's the whole thought of it's things that you don't hear about. It's the stuff that doesn't get published. It's yeah. it's the information that you're not told about these certain locations and stuff like that. So next time you go through a cemetery, I would just basically bear in mind that you may be going there to, and like if, if you go and investigate it or something like that and check out the paranormal side of a cemetery, just remember that it's also a place where there has people have been driven to that. Yeah, you know, and and you've got to be very respectful because not only you're dealing with the people that are probably buried there, but the people who have taken their lives there. And I've seen it over and over again on on YouTube and stuff like that, where people go into cemeteries to investigate. I know a lot of groups in Australia investigate cemeteries. I know they're very very respectful because they understand this side of thing. But I guess it's more to do with the new people. Yeah, um, that things to look out for. If like if you see ropes from trees and stuff like that, there's a reason they're there. And it's a very good chance someone's actually hung himself there or something like that. So just just bear that in mind when you're out. A little bit morbid to start off the show, but I think it was very prevalent to bring up that yeah. sort of information. And I mean, only, I remember, probably about four or five months ago, there was some talk about it in the media as well, whereas mm. a lot of the records up until sort of fairly recent times, you know, the last 30 or 40 years, the newspapers were quite blasé in the way that they reported all of this stuff. And, I mean in graphic graphic detail and that was that was normal fare on the front page of the courier mail and you know the brisbane courier before that where they had no qualms in you know going into minute detail about how people died that's so right very bloodthirsty whereas the last you know couple of decades it's pretty much been swept under the carpet even to the point where now I mean, you know, you hear with the story bridge there's been a police incident or, you know, this place there's been a police incident and you have a gut feeling that you'll you'll read that some poor person has been driven to suicide the next day. But there was some talk only about four or five months ago that perhaps it should start, you know, without the gory details but actually be reported in the newspapers um, to actually sort of raise the profile, you know, of depression and, and you know, bring it to people's attention yeah. that it is a problem. You it, know, it, is, it is a we serious start talking problem. about it. You know, it, hopefully it will save a lot of lives because people won't feel the mm. need to go and go and commit suicide. And, 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 so. it, and it's and it's interesting because I mean there are great organisations like Beyond Blue, yep. especially f- just for men. Uh, there is also your doctor and stuff like and look and like I said earlier before, look I, I've had um, yeah I've lost friends through suicide um, at a very young age, um, and it was only I think. About a year ago, I lost someone else I knew through suicide. So, and it's a very, 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 very touchy subject, I know. And, and I just say, if you do require help, please um, speak to somebody. Uh, take the time to go and speak to somebody and don't end up a statistic. I mean, yeah, life sucks at times, but, you know, we, we need to do something about it. Yeah, anyway, anyway, uh, back on the side. We are talking about cemeteries tonight um, in general, and we're now we're going to talk about our, our experiences as investigators in our past of actually doing 
investigate in cemeteries. Um, look, I find cemeteries a great place, especially when you first starting off to learn. But I've had some really weird ass experiences um, while doing cemeteries. And a lot of people who do cemeteries, oh, there's nothing there, yada yada. Yet a lot of the times there isn't. But we, we we had a bit of a we we're mucking around before. And we had a bit of a chat about you know experiences. I thought it'd be interesting to share these with people. Um, I'm going to get Liam go first because he's got a couple of doozies, and I'll go into mine. So Liam, what was yours, buddy? Um, oh, probably the one that comes to mind. I was having a chat to somebody the other night just about weird stuff that happens at cemeteries, um, and probably one of the first ones that comes to mind happened at a cemetery just up on the north side of Brisbane. Um, where I walked into the cemetery, it was a day like we've been having in Brisbane the last yeah. couple of weeks where it was, you know, drizzly and cold and fairly bleak and thought, oh, I'll pop in. Sort of in the middle of the day as well, I thought I'll, I was in the area, thought I'll pop in and have a look. It's a fairly small, quaint cemetery and thought I'll have a bit of a look and that way, you know, sort of no one's going to think I'm too queer yeah. because there shouldn't be anybody around. And walked into the cemetery and there's a rather large monument at sort of just in not far inside the front gate of the cemetery and I was standing there and it's drizzling away and it's quite quiet because it's away from any main roads or anything and Mm -hmm. there was a child's giggle as absolutely crystal clear and it came from where near this monument and so so clear that I thought oh there's must be kids playing in the cemetery they're playing hide and seek or something and yeah some little kids seen me and had a giggle and dive behind this monument and I did laps around that monument and there was no kid. Yep. So I jumped across a couple of rows, still no <laughs> kid, ended up doing a full lap of this cemetery. And it's pretty much only one spot you can come in or out. And yep. You can see it for the most part from anywhere in the cemetery. No kids to be seen at all. But it was crystal clear. Like the little kid, you know, mucking around, had a laugh, you know, playing hide and seek. Like it was only two metres away. And that, yeah, that seriously opened my eyes. I mean, that's, no that's, explanation for it at all. No, it's it's funny. It's not the only one. I've well, my my personal experience as when I was living in New Zealand there, um, I used to go to um, Karori Cemetery quite a bit. And we actually filmed an episode there once because of all the stories and that. But it was more to do with the vandalism and, and stuff like that. Yep. It was more of a doco on that. Anyway, um, me, me and the me and the guys were out one night. So uh, we'll go and call because we, we were lucky enough that we had enough, I guess, respect from local council that we were allowed to go there. We got full permission and everything. Anyway, one night we're there and it was about two o'clock in the morning, and we're just doing our thing, just walk around, checking the place out, and you know. Anyway, there's about six of us, and and we're standing up in the older part. Now there's over a hundred hectares. Crawley wow. Cemetery is the largest cemetery in New Zealand. It is massive. It just goes on and on and and it's in different stages. I used to love going to the older section, you know, it's all overgrown, yeah, a lot of the a lot of the concrete's caved in and so that all the names are worn off. Anyway, we're we're walking through there. We only had our torches, you know, and checking things out and that. And next time we could hear this like a little girl, like coming just a couple of metres over from us. We couldn't see anything behind this row of bushes going, Is anyone there? Is anyone there? Can you help me please? Is anyone there? And we we're like, we all heard it. We all yep. stopped and went, we're calling out. Yeah, yeah, we're here. You're okay? We are, where are you? Where are you? And we'll come find you. And we, we separated. And we just started looking. We went around and there was no one there. But then we could hear up another section. And, you know, the faint, it's, can anyone help me, please? And I'm going, and I was starting to freak out by this stage going, shit, there's a kid yeah, in a cemetery on his own at 2 o'clock. What the hell's going on here? Yeah. So I'm on the phone to the friggin' police saying, look, we've got a kid in the cemetery. Yeah, yeah, ha, ha. No, no, I said, I'm serious. There's, uh, uh, it sounds like there's a child here. Anyway, the uh, security ended up coming because I got hold of because I knew him. I sort of got hold of the security for the cemetery and they came out and give us a hand. And they could hear it. And every time we go to a certain spot where we thought she was, we heard her somewhere else. It was yep. like we were following a, a trail if you know what I mean. It would, but it was only around this particular one section. Anyway, um, it was the most... And and then it just stopped. So f- I think for hours we were just looking around and there was no kid there. Seriously, mate, there was no one around whatsoever. So we had the same experience where we... And I love to hear zombie listeners actually had had similar experiences where they've had voices in cemeteries but you just can't find the person... 
Yeah, you know, and this sound like a little girl. Yeah, uh, yeah, you because know, we're all freaking the shit out. We're going, what the hell's going on here? So we're running around the whole friggin' cemetery in these certain areas, trying to. And this voice always seemed only a couple of meters away. And there were six of us, and we heard it. We had security out there checking it out. We had, we had, you know, uh, reported to the police. We we did everything like that. But the weirdest thing is, we weren't the only ones to experience this and report that. Yep. That's the thing. We're just one of many people who've had that experience. It's always a little girl who's calling for, and these are stories people don't necessarily hear about. And I think one of the most other weirdest events I had in a cemetery, and it was Quarry Cemetery. There's something about that place. It's just so, it's so vast, and the same because Wellington's very hilly. So you know, you actually need, you basically need your hiking boots to get anywhere. Yeah, so we're there. walking up and down the friggin. <laughs> up mountains, basically, in certain areas. Anyway, no, I was on 4BC one night. Um, you, you've, you've done the Paranormal, paranormal Panel yourself. Panel, yep. and, that, and that, That's the show that I've actually officially been banned from because uh, I upset the sceptic for some reason. I'm such a charming guy. I was yeah. <laughs> such a lovely bloke. Well, I managed to upset him. Um, anyway, so anyway, the story is I'm sitting there talking away and um, – the group of us, this was another night, we were standing right up and you had these big steel gates, you know, that used to, you know, the, where the stop cars coming in yep. and out. Of there. We, we all stand there and we were a good, I don't know, 50 metres away from the gates and next time we hit it, uh, you know, the gates are swinging backwards and forwards. Now, if you know Wellington is a windy place, I thought, oh, yeah, it's just a breeze blowing, someone forgot to lock it. So we started walking down. Just thought I'd better do the right thing and... Make sure it's like you don't want people travelling through yep. there and that. Anyway, the gates are open and closed. What one gate was open and closed and look and but it's shut. Okay, oh, this is a bit unusual. When we got down there, we found it. It actually, it no, it wasn't locked, but the chain was wrapped around it. Okay. So there was no reason, no for reason it to for it swing to be open. It was like and... when we got close enough to it, we're going, hang on, there's no way this should be opening. Because it wasn't a, I admit it wasn't locked, but the chain was physically wrapped around a couple of times. So there's no way, it, like both ends. Yeah. So that really put the wind up us. So we're standing there going, oh crap, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't think. So these these are weird events. I mean, you've got a couple of yours as well. Yeah. I mean, tell about the story so, you went through, <laughs> literally went through. <laughs> oh, yeah. In a, another smaller cemetery where. Um, over on west side of Brisbane, just standing there, and that was another fairly cold, wet winter day, mm. and on a section of grass that wasn't necessarily supposed to have anybody buried underneath it, and all of a sudden there was one almighty crack, and I disappeared up to the knees, in the, <laughs> yeah, into the dirt. <laughs> did you so, did you like have a hand reach up and try and grab you and pull you down again? I don't think I stayed in the hole long enough oh, that, <laughs> for any hands to grab me oh, out. I but, mean. That's that's the thing, man. It's like I, I mean, these were. It's. I think your imagination does run away with you. I mean, look, if I if I've actually gone through, and and this is the thing, people got to realise that when you walk through these grassy areas and cemeteries, ninety nine point nine percent there's something underneath you. Yeah. Yeah. I always tend to stick to paths and stuff like that. I don't like going cross country, but sometimes you have to. It'd be nothing worse than walking through and next minute going down about six feet yeah, and landing and on somebody and going. Okay, this well, isn't pleasant. <laughs> I mean, that's in, you know, we talk about that on the moonlight too. There's this big section of grass smack bang in the middle of South oh, Brisbane right, Cemetery. It and it looks, it looks for all intensive purposes like a bit of a recreation area in the middle yeah. of the cemetery. And it's actually the pauper section. Yeah. Um, you know, and a lot of people, that was the old Diamantina Hospital was just next to the cemetery, you know, many moons ago. It's the PA hospital now. Yeah. Um, but sort of a lot of people, you know, it was also sort of the disease hospital as well. So people who were dying from, you know, all sort of weird and wacky um, viruses and flus and whatnot, you know, and didn't have that much money would be taken across and buried in this pauper section, yeah. hence no headstones. But and also they wouldn't be as deep as what generally. Yeah. You know I mean, they... they so, yeah. and it's quite scary to go through the cemetery records and, you know, it's like eight people buried in this grave. 12 people buried in that grave. Yeah, it's literally you've got multiple bodies yeah. in one grave. It's, it's a mass grave in all in purpose terms, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean the number of times I've been to South Brisbane during the daytime, you pop in on a weekend just to go and check out a headstone or you want to check out a story that yep. you could give a run on the tour and there'll be a family who's popped in to, you know, to visit grandma and 
leave some flowers and they've looked, oh, that's a lovely piece of grass. I'll put the picnic rug out and we'll yep. have our lunch. And yep. you think, and next you know, minute, if you only, joining you. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you think if you only knew you're actually having a picnic on top of a whole heap of graves. But yeah, you know, this is, a lot this of people don't appreciate that, I think, in well, cemeteries. down on the road. Well, that's it. The, the, the highway leading down. On, oh, I'm very. I get very animated when I talk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got my arms stretched out and I'm going. How about the down on the road itself? There are still people buried under that. What's that street? Well, so I can't think of the name of the road. Runs just underneath the cemetery. Just underneath the cemetery. They needed to put a road along the riverbank. Yeah. So, so they, they just they just moved the tombstones. They left the yeah, bodies. So they pushed the tombstones over and bulldozed it nice and flat and put some tar on it and Bob's and your people uncle. People drive over it on it. <laughs> Sorry, people drive over it every. Day. Yeah, I mean, Someone's cemetery wise, we've got an absolutely horrible history in Brisbane of oh, mistreatment of cemeteries. I mean, we've got, you know, the Brisbane's original cemetery is sitting just near sort of where B105 and Triple M are mm. at North Quay, and it's under a roundabout. You know, and that's that's a nice looking park with it's, a fountain in the middle of I it mean, that no one appreciates. That it sort of reminds of the old um, Poltergeist movies, how they sort of had. Um, how they they built all these houses on an old cemetery, and because they assumed that all the bodies were you know, exhumed and moved elsewhere, but all they did was move the headstones. And yep. so when they built all these houses, you had you built them houses on top of bodies, basically, and stuff like that. You know, I mean, you just don't know. Don't know. Well, I mean that that was the original Brisbane Cemetery back when it was Moreton Bay Penal yeah. Settlement, and that's got two hundred and fifty to two hundred and sixty people buried underneath there, and. Everyone drives over that, you know. And people thousands of motorists go, oh, drive over it every day. Oh, I mean, that's it's amazing when you think about it. So people at, at home right now listening are going, hmm, I don't think I'm going to sleep real now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder when my house was built. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, Suncorp Stadium, it's, yeah. you know, on top yeah. of Paddington Cemetery. Okay. There's anywhere between, you know, almost five and 10,000 bodies still buried underneath there. Yeah. So my great-great-great-grandfather's still under there somewhere. Watching the footy. Yeah. <laughs> So tripping I mean, uh, tripping you, the blues you, you, players over at State yeah. of Origin time. But you've got to admit, I mean, these are all, you know, a lot of, a lot of development. And, and we're going to go, you were looking at the great catacombs of, of Paris. Yeah. If in Paris itself, you've got this little walkway, you walk down these stairs and it says something about the dead, you know, like it's got this huge, I can't even remember what it is now. But the reason behind that is because Paris grew too big. I mean, as the, as the city expanded, they needed the room. They needed to build. And so doing the right thing, though, they actually assumed 90% of it, I think it is, assumed 90% of the, the, the remains. But as they, as they built all these tunnels, I think about 100 years or something from memory, it yep. took a while to build it. It'd and take... also it was ruining their, their grapes. You know, it was ruining the wine as well because all the bodies weren't, you know, they did things differently. But they actually lined the, 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 the walls and made pillars out of skeletons and skulls and, and bones and all these things and I, when I get to Paris I, I've got to go down there and check it yeah, out. check it out. And there's one way sure. in. And there's a bit of footage that I've seen on YouTube lately and I love looking at my YouTube and there's this guy, supposedly they found his camera and he was through going through the catacombs and next year you know, he's lost and you can tell he's lost he's, he's hyperventilating and he's got no way out and all of a sudden he drops the camera and takes off. And all he's seen is a camera on the ground and he runs off. And that's the last they see of him. So that's the latest story out there at the moment. They found found footage, as they do. <laughs> yeah, right. I think a shenanigans going on a there. A Blair Witch style. Yeah, another Blair Witch style. But it's very interesting. But they reckon some creepy-ass shit goes on down there. So you think about it at the end of the day. You have all this... I mean, I always vow that not every cemetery has anything. A lot. I reckon 90% of them don't. Yep. They're just the wrong location, the wrong wrong mineral content, wrong a lot of wrong, wrong, wrong. Wrong, wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong for any sort of, like, Dean Parent or stuff. But there are cemeteries out there that just take on a friggin' life of their own. Um, like the one at, I never forget, and this is going back to South Brisbane, um, years ago, I mean, my sister uh, went out. And and her husband and a friend of ours just went out checking it out. And you can actually found find this photo on the Facebook fan site. It's buried there somewhere. Isn't it? I mean, there's so many bits and pieces of information. I should post it again. Actually, I will post it on on the on the fan site again. Um, we we were leaving, and it just got odd. You know, what I mean, like we were walking through there, and it was fine. I have no problem some days. I'll walk through there on my own at night, and I, I don't care. But all of a sudden, I, you just felt odd. You know, and, yep. and as Will said, no, nah, we've got to go. It's time to go. And as I was spun around, I just happened to take a random shot. 
and I've, people have actually might have seen this already, but there's this thing coming out of the sky. You've seen the photo yeah, with the red eyes and the thing coming down. I'm like, how the what? No, all right, I didn't <laughs> see it till I got home. And I was like, oh crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and but there's also been a story where there's been lights seen at that cemetery as well, and Tuong Cemetery, especially yeah, Tuong there's been cemetery. lights going through, like lights scooting around the tombstones and. So that's an old story. Yeah, oh, this goes back for a number of decades. You know, so the lights that are seen up, you know, towards Birdwood Terrace, which yeah. runs along the top of the cemetery, and you know, dancing lights, and I mean, that's been a fairly common occurrence in a lot of cemeteries yeah. right around the world. It's not a, you know, it's not a one-off occurrence, and you know, it dates back to sort of that Willow the Wisp, you know, kind of kind of entity. Yeah. Um, you know, even to yeah being you know being deemed corpse candles and yes, I mean that's I mean originally where the whole concept of the Min Min light came as well from the cemetery out the back of the Min Min Hotel. Yep, you know where yeah it balls was, of gas come up and you know, being a rough you know, a rough Min Min sort of hotel. Yeah. You know, it was a lot of people you know drank <laughs> and died and <laughs> got stabbed and you know were sort of very unceremoniously buried out the backyard yeah. of the pub and you know it was from that cemetery that the Min Min light you know first. You know, first was spotted and used to you know originate around the cemetery. So, but it's quite funny that I mean I got fooled one night, absolutely fooled. And this is a some some tombstones or some graves do have a solar panel light. And I was taken hook, line, and sinker one night, and I was very young. I was about seventeen. I was in Gladstone Cemetery. This is really before solar panels come out and stuff like that. You know, you get the solar panels. Yep. And, and there's this, well, I'm walking through there checking it out as I usually do. And there's a fairly new, and next time I see this glow coming from this tombstone, and I just about shit myself. Yep. I certainly had the streaks of crap running up my back. I was, but being an inquisitive little turd, I went and, and it, it turns out it was just a light. Someone had erected this little, little light that came on when the sun went down, and I just happened to be there late, and it just started dim, and it just put off enough glow off and going, oh, what the fuck am I? <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's quite popular nowadays, just well, having those things. But I, I mean, remember we shot a doco you know, way back in the old Brisbane Ghost Hunters mm. days down at Redland Cemetery, and that would be, geez, early 2000s, and had done a big section, you know, gotten the permission and everything from Redland yep. Shire Council and to go into the cemetery and shoot a night you know some night scenes in there and had finished the shoot and i left and the camera crew were packing up their stuff and i got all of about five minutes down the road and got this teary phone call <laughs> and one of the girls screaming down the phone that they were still in the cemetery <laughs> shouldn't laugh. finishing packing their things up and you know they could see you know down sort of deep into the cemetery there was a grave and there was flames coming out of it what? and she was Absolutely hysterical Flames. that this you know head the, the headstone was on fire and they'd been watching it ever since I'd left the cemetery and I had to come back and you know absolutely hysterical and you could hear there was two other guys and they were pretty rough and tumble guys and they, 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 they were they and were they were screaming you could hear them in the background as well so <laughs> I they hit the laugh. brakes and turned around and flew back to the cemetery yeah. and pulled up and sure enough like way down the back of the cemetery here's this weird flickering glow coming off this headstone yeah. so they were all you know what are you going to do about it <laughs> and i said i'll i'd wander down and have a look so As you do like manly does manly man do. manly man. man manly man do. and they yeah, were we yeah, absolutely 100 percent. don't go down there it's it's not right so i'd wandered down anyway and it was just a grave and somebody one of the family members obviously fairly recently had come and they'd stuck a whole heap of these big sort of tinsel red tinsel pinwheels yeah on the grave, being a windy night and there's trees moving yeah. and you know and the light lights filtering the down through the trees was, was uh, hitting the pinwheels that were spinning <laughs> and it made it look like the grave was lit up with fire. That's but rude. for 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes, they'd been up the other end of the cemetery Crabbing having himself. an absolute fit. I thought oh, dude, it would have like, taken you two minutes to walk down and have a quick look. I mean, this, this is the thing. This is You get yourself in those situations where it, you just... You don't know what to do, and, and yeah. generally people don't, and I, I don't blame them for it because you, your imagination just goes weird ass, and, you, and you're looking at these things that shouldn't be happening. I mean, I've had the shit scared out of me by friggin' birds. Well, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, first time in, in New Zealand, my first cemetery in New Zealand, man. Oh, I'm sitting there, and and oh god, the seagulls—you could put saddles on them. 
they're that big. They're, 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 they're like mutants. No, I know. The, the, we the, had the Pacific the, gulls when I lived in Tasmania. Oh, they're, they're, God, they're the size anyway. of a massive chicken. And, and well, I'm, I'm, I'm coastal and I'm near this like, cemetery on the coast. And of course, seagulls go where there's probably food anywhere. They just happen there. I'm sitting there. I could. The bush started. <laughs> I'm going, oh, what the f- <laughs> this one big white ass thing just come leaping out of the bushes. It's a freaking seagull, man. This thing was massive, but it, there'll just happen to be a bin there. That's going yeah. oh, it's geez. guarding, guarding its oh, chips. And... Here's me, big, big, tough brain. <laughs> Turned to water in a heartbeat. Oh, it's so easy to do. Oh, God. Yeah, well, Misadventures yeah. and, and flying everything. foxes bursting oh, out my, of bushes. Oh. Well, like, you've got to be careful of them now. They've all got lissavirus. The lissavirus that kill you. So. Yeah, I mean, that, that kid is. Um, point. Yeah, he's pretty sick too. Yeah, so can't. so just be careful of uh, flying foxes, guys. Don't they're not pets. You don't want to pet them. They're, 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 they're rats with wings in my eyes. Yeah, uh, but they are. Yeah, they are protected. Well, they got inch long fangs, virtually to begin with. They're, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. Just f- stuff. big furry set of teeth. So, so, we've, so we've gone from cemeteries to bats and <laughs> seagulls. Yeah, <laughs> that's how the zombie rolls. On that's to, how we do yeah. things. We Brad <laughs> Liam's <laughs> wildlife hour. Brad's wildlife hour, right? Um, yeah, and uh, listen, just quickly speaking of wildlife hours, and uh, just like to thank uh, Reanimated. Haven't they done some cool they stuff? They have right? done some amazing uh, work. Rean- uh, thanks to Reanimated, uh, the guys, Chantel and Matthew. Uh, big, big shout out to you guys. Uh, you have done an amazing job. It is because of their hard work and love for the zombie that the zombie website looks the way it does now. They did all the art. for. They did all the backdrop. They did the new logos. They did everything. And I'm very proud to call them part of the Naked Zombie family. They are part of our sponsors. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and like I said, and this is the thing: we don't chase money for sponsorship at all. You know, not, we don't want anything. You know, we don't really ask for anything. But it's like uh, Zombie Steves; they are supplying us with cool stuff in the near future to give away. Yeah, so it's in, giveaways in contests, and prizes and, and surprises, and stuff like that, because they will take care of that side of it for us. Um, Reanimate have done amazing artwork for the website. So if, if you're looking to become a sponsor down the, down, down the future, we, we're not, it's not about the money. It's about, you know, helping each other out, I guess. Yeah. And, and I'm very proud to call them friends now, both, um, both Reanimated and Zombie Steve's. Um, check them both out. They do them, both of them. Uh, Zombie Steve's amazing shop. Yeah, where the, I mean, oh, come on, man, so I'm much a geek. Come on, shit, dude. I was in geek speak. You'd love to have like half oh, a million dollars oh, at your disposal to go, go crazy. Shop. And um, of course, reanimated with the amazing artwork. Uh, geek speak with their phenomenal geek speak like man cave. I had yep. such fun doing it. They boys did an uh, amazing job. I, I'm in awe of these guys. Um, and we've got all these fantastic other people who just. Uh, open their, their their arms and hearts out to naked zombies. And say, hey guys, we 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 think what you do is funny, and we we think you're informative, and we entertain, and we'd love to be a part of it. Yeah. And and this is how this ends up being what it is. And I cannot thank our sponsors enough for helping the zombie go where it is going now. And of course, the TV series is coming up, and um, we've got four months to get that sorted out and organised. And Briz Thirty One or Channel Thirty One. Uh, digital uh, at this stage, everything's going to look like it's going to plan, and we'll have ten episodes on there, an hour long each. Um, and people are still asking me who are the two mystery, and I'm not allowed to say that comes later on. The who are the two mystery? I have a special segment coming up on the show, and it's going to be the two biggest rat bags you'd ever want to meet. Oh, seriously, dude, they. Oh <laughs> God, I have not. I I got roped into something. No, I didn't. Um, but they they will be released shortly. Who they will be? Let out of the cage. They will be let out of their cage and out of their box and be run loose. And they have their own segment on the show. So we we we're basically we're trying to put something together for everyone to enjoy. It's it's not going to be. Yeah, it, it, I guess it's going to be like the naked debate. For, for TV. Yep. But we've got to make it fun and interesting for people as well. So that's what it's going to be like. There won't be any of us running around location. Look, we will be going down location asking people. So if you see us walking around with big production camera gear like run. we've got now, run, <laughs> uh, run for starters because I'll probably follow you home. Um, if you see us out doing that, we will be hitting the streets of Brisbane. We will be going up to Total Strangers and asking their opinion. 
what do you think of this subject? What do you think of ghosts? What do you think of the paranormal? It is the the Naked Zombie TV is solely going to be about all the spooky shit. Yep. It's spooky shit. That's all it's about. I mean, with the Naked Zombie Radio, we do a lot of pop culture, we do a lot of movies, a lot of geek stuff, and of course we deal in the paranormal. Um, but we're going to be doing that side of it. Naked Zombie TV is solely about all the creepy ass shit out there. So it should yep. make it interesting yeah. for people who love that side of thing. Everything in, and the kitchen sink. Everything in the so. kitchen sink. So and we might even, I don't know, we might even do a live show somewhere one night and get people come in and watch us do it. That'd be interesting. That'd be very uh, interesting. Watch me stuff up totally. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad when I'm doing it in front of you, but when I go do it in front of a crowd, it's like, oh, I'm very shy. It's all shy. I'm going all shy. But yeah, no, look, we've got about another 10 minutes to go to the show tonight, and we were talking about creepy ass cemeteries. And there are some creepy ass cemeteries out there. Uh, if you have a creepy ass cemetery that you'd like to talk to us about, send it into us. Send us send us your story. We'll read yeah, it out. Bang bang your stories yeah, through we to the love website reading or your to stories. the Facebook page, and yeah, we'll give it some airtime and have yeah, a chat give about it. So. We'll, we'll, we'll put it up there. We'll read it out. We'll, you know, you get full credit for it. We're not interested in taking anyone's work. Yeah, you know? we have no interest in that. Yeah, uh, but we love to hear from you guys, our, our fantastic uh, zombie army, as I like to call you. So that's what we want to do. And also, look, I get a few emails from people who want to send stuff in. So if you want to send in some artwork or you want to send in, um, I don't know, some weird-ass shit, <laughs> yeah, you want to send something to the Naked some Zombie donuts. Boys? Um, donuts would be nice. Donuts, yeah, donuts. Yeah. Are lollies. I love lollies. <laughs> I'm a big lolly fan. So if you are from somewhere around the world and you like the show and everything and you want to send us something from overseas and stuff like that, something small as a, as a like something funny or stupid or drawing, whatever, we're, we're up for good shits and giggles, yep. uh, you'll find that the address is not on the website. You'll actually have to contact us first to get the address. Yeah, fax, fax through your donuts. Yeah, fax through your donuts. Yeah. No, if, if you want the actual post address, to the Naked Zombie Studio, guys. I, I don't put it up there for a reason. It's like, it's like the Bat Cave. It's all very secretive. It's very secretive. But um, if you title it, um, uh, if you want to send us something, of course, because your details are logged on there. So if I get like a chicken's head in the mail or something like that, I know who it came from. <laughs> if you know what I mean, like this is for you, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's just gross. I'll put that away. And we're actually going to do a little video podcast as well. And whoever sends something in, I'm going to put it up on the video podcast and do a yep. big shout out to them. So they're, they're easy to do. Um, so I'll be doing a few more of those. Um, and we've got lots of other cool stuff happening. Um, what else other news we got before we go tonight? Okay. Uh, yeah, the fantastic cause as well. Oh, the fantastic cause, and and this is this is something that's yeah. You, you, I'll let you tell the story. Okay, yeah, it's and this was brought to brought to our attention by um, good friend Jason Walker, who we had on when was that early yeah. earlyish last year yeah. from Historic Haunts Australia. But um, he's got a good friend Sam Johnson, who many people would most likely know from Cracker Jack and Secret yeah. Life of Us. He's one of the you know best recognised sort of younger Australian actors. Yep. Um, his sister's been fighting cancer for quite a number of years and she's been very lucky that they've pulled her through a couple of times. But yep. um, unfortunately, she's been diagnosed with terminal breast cancer at the moment. So he's decided she's uh, probably... She, uh, outlook doesn't look too, too yep. good at the moment. Um, but he's decided that uh, given that it's his sister, he wants to go out and actually try and break the Guinness World Record. He's going to ride a unicycle around Australia uh, for 15,000 thousand kilometers and trying to raise a million dollars for breast cancer research and to try and try and you know sort of bring breast cancer to everyone's attention that it is a you know it's something important that needs to be very important we need to find a cure for so yeah definitely anyone out there jump onto facebook and the site's called love your sister yep so type that into the search bar on facebook and by all means go over and hit that like button for them and yeah if you can if you can afford five or ten bucks throw it into the cause and help push him towards that million dollars well we'll we'll be we'll be yeah we'll be putting a small yeah we don't make any money but we'll be Dipping in our own pockets yep. to put towards that because so I think it's very, a very, very worthy cause. cause. So yeah, show some love. So it's called uh, so love, love your sister. Love your sister. If you go to look on Facebook, love your sister. You will find the details there. It's for a great cause. Uh, a well-known Australian actor riding a unicycle in support to show the love for his sister, which is amazing. You it's, got me. It's, mate, it's, it's absolutely. You, know, you sort of think fifteen thousand kilometres is a, a long way. 
on a, on, on, on a push bike, but driving on a is a long way. But to have a look at the map, it's you know literally sort of from Melbourne up around Brisbane, yep. you know, back to Melbourne, sort of up through the Northern Territory and around WA just to get the fifteen thousand yep. kilometres up. So yeah, he's he's going to be going the hard yards the next few weeks, you know, yep. pushing through this. So so love yeah, your show sister, showing your support. Yeah, show your support, love your sister, and that's what's about uh, raising great money and calls for breast cancer. And we might just finish up there tonight, old mate, on that, on a bit of a positive theme. Positive night, say. that's it. We've had a bit of a creepy ass night. We've, we've, we've gone through the subjects of, um, you know, like the suicide thing and yep. cemeteries and stuff like that. We've talked about our own creepy ass experience in cemeteries. Uh, we've talked about different events and stuff that has happened, talked about Moonlight Tours or what's yep. happening there. Uh, if you have an event that you wish to broadcast out to the world, uh, please let us know. We don't charge. No, so no, any, any cool. If you've got cool an event coming up and events you need a bit of a plug, let us know. Brad, Liam, I've got this event coming up. Can you give it a bit of a? We'll plug it and send <coughs> and send donuts and send donuts. Yeah. Uh, no, no lollies. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, give us the information. We'll put it up on the website. We'll give you a bit of a shout out on on the radio show as well to get those details up and out yep. to the community out there. So if you've got a special event coming up that you wish to be spread out to the big bad world of the interweb, please let us know. It won't cost you a cent. And we'll even put it up on the website so people get to see it on the posts and also go under the events column as well. But if it all goes like Corey Worthington and yeah, your street gets trashed, it's not our fault. No. What happened there? That was that young twit down the Gold Coast. Oh, there was a funny glass party and trashed his entire neighborhood. How was that? Years ago. Oh yeah, this is okay. This is this is this is twat television now. This young fellow, I don't know, if you're overseas and you haven't heard this story, and this, this made national news, and this, this is how funny it gets. This young fellow, Corey, decides to throw a house party. Not only did his parents' house, he was 16. Yeah, only 15, 15 or 16. 16, yeah. He decides to throw a party, his parents away. Hey, not only did his house get trashed, and this is really before Facebook or anything, wasn't it? Well, I think it was around the advent of Facebook. Because it started. He thought it would be funny just to openly advertise yeah. it on MySpace or Facebook, whichever one it was at the, the time. The whole street got destroyed. Literally, cars were... Fireball. I mean, we're talking all sorts of bad shit happened. Anyway, this is, this is where it gets funny. It made national news around Australia. So this young fella, he wears these big, bright... Yellow sunglasses, yeah. They were, yeah pink and or he kind of like a, went and got himself like a fur, fur, fur coat, coat and, and, and with a tag off it and all this other shit. Anyway, and um, they asked him to remove his sunglasses, and I remember now he goes, "Oh, that's my look." And this young fellow actually got employed to he throw part. Up, yeah, he, he ended up as like a DJ party party planner. manager guy. Only in Australia that would happen. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and I think his parents got clipped with the eighty odd thousand dollar bill to um, to clean up the street. So there you go. You have been listening to the Naked Zombie. If you have an interesting story or something that you'd like to forward on to us, please do by going to Brad at Brad Scott dot com, which is my email address, or you can go to the website www dot no, 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 just Google Naked Zombie Radio. You're probably listening to this anyway. Uh, go to the contacts page and get in touch with us that way um, and whatever else. Yep, you... private, private message on private Zombie message Facebook, on Facebook page. Facebook. Don't forget to tell your friends about the Naked Zombie so they can get on the Facebook page and hit that likey button and, and tell your friends about us because we're harmless. Yeah, it's it's regular, <laughs> regular goodness every day in the post. So and that's the thing. You'll miss uh, it otherwise. We, we pretty much hammer... Absolute useless facts and information on the Facebook site, the fan site. We, we only put the good stuff on the website, <laughs> but the actual Facebook fan site is just a free-for-all of absolute rubbish. That's the way it's we awesome, like though. it. It's awesome, though. It's awesome, it's, it's though. If, you, awesome don't, if you don't like the rubbish this hour, just give Bug it 20 off. minutes and there'll be something new <laughs> up. There'll be something else I'll find and put up there. But listen, thank you everyone for tuning into the Naked Zombie Night. It has been my pleasure again to talk to you all and thank you Liam for joining my us. My pleasure uh, again as always. Uh, another show coming up this week, hopefully if everything goes to plan. Uh, Wadzi will be coming and join us in the show. Uh, we've got some uh, super duper guests coming up in the near future. We do. Uh, we do, we do. We're not allowed to say just yet. Uh, also don't check out our compadrets, which is Ghosts of Oz. Uh, the Paranormal Guide, uh, great, great podcasts, uh, radio shows as well do with the paranormal. They are good friends of ours and we support them in every which way and they do for us. Uh, so show the love. If you if you 
if if you want more, there's other great shows out there that I'm sure you'll find fascinating as well. So yep. Paranormal Guide, Ghosts of Oz or Goo, I like to call them in Sydney, and that and check them out because they're well worth it. And also, don't forget the podcast for Geek Speak if you're a big nerd like me because I sit there and listen to them and I chuckle myself silly. Yeah, all the other good geeky, your geek, if you're geeky, into geeky nerdy stuff, stuff, Geek Speak podcast. And don't forget also if you get on to Channel 31, you can check out uh, Late Night with Scott. Yep. Black, uh, look, not bad. I really, enjoy, I quite enjoyed it. Yeah, it was, it was funny, and and I, I just tend to take the piss out of people, <laughs> but, uh-huh. but it was fun. Uh, and that's basically about it for tonight's show. I think I've plugged everything I had to plug and wanted to plug and everything. So, uh, like I say each week on the show, have a good knife and safe night. And if you're out touching other people, make sure they're not aware about it at the time. So I'm Brad yeah. Scott and Liam Baker. Liam Baker, the the, the eye candy, uh, and you have been listening to. Naked Zombie Radio. Good night, all. Night.